Oh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Coming to you, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. And guys, we're here. This is Force Fest 2020. We are here. It is finally upon us. Guys, this is awesome. Um, thank you guys for having us. My name is John Mark Tolley. Uh, joining us today is our my other two co-hosts. First is Mr. Ray Rumsey. Ray, how are you today, sir? I'm great. Hello, everybody. And of course, there is writer, director, producer, all around crazy guy, Mr. Joe Cahill. Hey, Joe. How's, how's everybody doing? I'm doing good, and I'm going to try and keep you guys honest, rebel scum. Oh, <laughs> oh. All right. And, well, let's... and don't forget that that throughout, we're also raising money for Make a Wish for Greater LA. So, as you want throughout, please click on the diamond V in the corner of your chat and donate as much or as little as you can. Every right. little bit helps. Definitely, definitely great. It's a great cause. Um, you know, helping out kids, and it's always cool to see the videos of the kids meeting their favorite celebrity or their favorite superhero or um anything like that that's always cool to see so great great um great organization there so definitely like she said definitely help them out as you can however you can all right so let's just get right into it shall we um i think it's safe to say that the story of anakin's redemption is pretty much is the core of at least the original trilogy. That is the core story of his, of that Anakin's redemption and the prequels is Anakin's fall. And we've seen, we've seen the movies. We've all seen what led up to Anakin's fall. What I want to talk about today is who holds the most responsibility for that. Who is the one person who was in a position to stop him, to pull him back, but failed? Who failed Anakin the most? I guess that's the best way I can put it is who failed Anakin the most? Um, the first person I want to start with. Well, first of all, I just want to throw a few names just out right, right out that I think we can kind of put out as far as being... Not kind of what I'm talking about. Oh, thank you, Brian. Brian says he's proud of us. Thank you. Um, that means that really means a lot coming from 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 someone like you, Brian. That's really cool. Thank you. Yes, thanks for coming um, out from accounting to uh, talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the names I just want to kind of put out as far as not even considering is Qui Gon. You know, I think it's he was never in the position to stop Anakin, um, to pull him back because obviously he died before anything could have happened. And uh, and the same thing with Palpatine, but for a different reason, because there's always Palpatine's goal to get Anakin. So we're going to be talking about today are people who were in his life that at any point in stage could have stepped in and could have intervened um, to kind of pull him back from the darkness. And the first person I want to talk about is really a group, and that's the, the council. I think the council holds a lot of responsibility in Anakin's fall and... Uh, Mm -hmm. Unless Qui Gon had mastered the whole Force Ghost thing a little quicker, that's um, <laughs> not anyway. wrong. That's a, that's a good point. <laughs> <I just try. laughs> yeah, there was. In fact, I remember one of the jokes was uh, after the prequels. I think it was after Episode Three. You know, three of watching it, someone yelling like, "Are they trying to get him to come off of the dark side?" Because <laughs> uh, it seemed like they were doing everything in their power to you know, to do that. Um, 
And particularly, I think I want to focus on Mace. You know, Mace, I think more than any of the Jedi Council, you definitely had that feeling, especially in episode three of that there was no love lost between when Mace and Anakin, uh, that there was a lot of distrust. And if you know anything about the Mace Windu character, you know that particularly his fighting style, uh, everything about him kind of skirted the dark side. So he's very attuned to the dark side and he sensed that darkness in Anakin. And instead of looking at that and saying, like going up to him saying, I can feel this darkness in you. I can help you. I know how to curve that to, you know, to use to use that darkness in a way that will not send you over to the edge. Let me train you. He seemed to do just the opposite. He seemed to push him away to show this uh, kind of, you know, ar- keeping him at arm's length and this mistrust and this kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know if, what to think of you. I mean, what do you guys think about about that and Mace's kind of influence and the, um, you know, what I'm trying to say, you know, as far as his his role in Anakin's turn. Well, well, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, as far as you know, Mace helping. Anakin become the greatness that he became, um, you know. So I, I'm really not seeing our our, our worry here. Um, you know, he 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 helped turn him to to become the great Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, he he definitely he had that. Uh, oh, how do you want to word that? He never really cared for Anakin a whole lot. It didn't seem like. I mean, yeah. he even went so far as to kind mm-hmm. of use him in the end. Like, oh, well, if you go spy on the the chancellor for us, and then if what you're saying is true, then we'll make you a Jedi master. You know, it's like, yeah, it's kind of up. yeah, that, that right there, that that right there, just kind of really shows. As uh, Alan just pointed out, the rigid rigidity of the gener- of the. Jedi in general sets the whole stage. And yeah, that's right. That kind of is this whole very rigid, the rigid system that they set up this uh, almost hypocritical system that they set up as far as, you know, they expect you to do, to do all this stuff, but they expect you to live by this very rigid set of of rules and this very rigid set of uh, dogma and, um, I think Mace really, Mace also, I think in, I'm using it, going to find a big word. He embodied this sort of the jet, the idea of the Jedi, the arrogance of the Jedi. Um, and I know you haven't seen, uh, Joe, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Clone Wars, but if you haven't, there's a scene in one of the last episodes where it's straight out of episode three. And it's the scene where all the Jedi are, are talking, Jedi Council is talking, and it's the one where Mace uses the line of, I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. And that is in actually in the one of the last episodes of the cartoon. And afterwards, they're congratulating Ahsoka for a mission, and he goes out of his way to very condescendingly call her civilian. Uh, after she says she's you know not a Jedi, he's, she hasn't decided if she's going to come back to the Order. She says, "Well, thank you, citizen." So you can kind of get that idea of the arrogance of the Jedi. This idea that we're better, you know, we're Jedi, we're better. And um, yeah, I think that was just part of Mace's character, and I definitely think that you know led to that kind of animosity and that kind of mistrust between him and Anakin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving on to another council member who I think this is might you know upset a few people, but I think Yoda has to take a little bit of the blame too. I mean, you you're not math you can't be master of the order and see what's going on. One of your you know, one of the prize members of your order, you know, the so-called chosen one, 
and not have a bunch of red flags going off. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that he deserves all the blame, but I definitely think that, you know, he can't get off just scot free of being like, like, oh, I didn't, nothing I knew was going on. Well, Yoda did um, say right in the get go, like, no, the he's too old. We're not going to train him. And if they had to just listen, yeah. you know. Yeah. But Yoda was kind of a pushover. They're like, yeah, oh, well, we're going to train him anyway, no matter what you say. Oh, okay. Well, let him in. Why not? Yeah. 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 True. True. Which raises the question. Um, <laughs> yes, Alan. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, is true. I didn't think about that. Actually, that actually brings up. Let's kind of go back to that and think about about Qui Gon and his his responsibility and um actually wanting wanting Anakin to be trained at such a quote unquote old age. Um at the time for for a for a to take on a padawan that of that age um i mean does qui-gon hold some blame do, do you guys think oh absolutely i think he was He's so or... much he wanted the prophecy to be real and true and for this boy he found on tatooine to be that one he wanted it so badly that he just like blindly embraced it you know it totally so, defied the council yeah. and just said i'm gonna do it regardless of what you say um yeah yeah right. yeah but then again that was that was kind of qui-gon's if you kind of it's kind of inferred that that's kind of qui-gon's mo <laughs> yeah you know he follows the will of the force you know instead of the will of the council he he follows the force or at least that's what mm -hmm. he says you know, he claims he follows the force, but I mean, was this a situation where the force was wrong or he was following his, his instincts were wrong or were they no, right? No, he balances the force. I mean, we can, we can get into the minutia of he did. He did. <laughs> Joe's talking about the long game. Though. Oh, we have another Brian in here. <laughs> Joe's talking about balancing the force. because He knew he'd yes. be Vader. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but that's uh, to me that's what the force wanted yeah that's that long game <laughs> i think qui-gon yeah. was the start of the blame game yeah <laughs> like i definitely think he was the beginning and it was kind of a domino effect that got us to that end part you know that's where he kind of started the catalyst and it went from there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a long list. Um, yeah. No. Uh, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And we're not. Gonna, we won't go to right, every right. everybody. But I just really wanted to focus on the people that were close to Anakin and were within. You know, per, that knew him personally right. at mm -hmm. some that's, point. That's then we have and to go his... into the whole Padme's fault. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. I mean, and that okay. That let's go right into Padme. Um, and we talked a little bit about in our episode, which if you haven't already, check it out. Uh, check out our, our podcast and look under the Women of Star Wars series we did. Um, but when we talked about Padme, one of the things we talked about was her role as kind of an enabler. And Absolutely. Knowing, knowing. You know, there's two. There's one scene in particular. The scene in on Tatooine uh, when he kills not the men, but the women and the children too. Um, but that whole scene right there, when he's telling her, that should have been a major red flag. That should have been just a major warning. Warning, Will Robinson. <laughs> warning, danger, Will Robinson. Danger. But she went right for it. She's like, eh, they probably <laughs> yes. deserved it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, that, that momentary look of horror, right, not then, right there. Oh, well, yeah. I, I'm good with it. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, well, it, it started. It started. Gone. She's like, so, oh my goodness. But then again, I hate the sand people. So, all right, we're all right. It, yeah, it balances it, out. We're but good. it started right away when she saw him, and she started treating him like the little kid again. 
at first. Mm-hmm. Annie, you know, how she recognized him. Yeah. If she yeah. stayed with that and not become a pedophile. Mm-hmm. Little Annie. Yeah. When I she's, think we would have like, been better. Oh. Yeah. Uh, because then the whole thing on yeah. uh, Naboo and uh, I'm sorry, she was yeah. just doing everything she could to hook him. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Well, and that's the thing is she knew in her position, she had to have known the ramifications that could happen with her and Anakin yeah, a getting Jedi, married. Which... She had to a Jedi. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't dumb. She had to have known what that could possibly mean. Not just the loss of his career in the Jedi Order, but the loss of her career as a politician. Yeah. I mean, you you know, you take everything else out. That was, well, and, you know, that would have been the equivalent in modern history of, you know, when uh, Edward the Seventh abdicated, or was at the eighth, I believe, abdicated to marry a divorcee. It would have been something similar to that in the Star Wars universe. You know, a highly, a high, you know, a senator of a of a major system. Is marrying a well, Jedi and, and knight. It shows you the perils and, and the evil of yeah. the uh, New Republic, where it's just you know, let's. It's mm-hmm. what I want. So we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Which is why exactly. the imperial system is so much better. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole thing, really. I mm-hmm. mean, if now thinking back on it, you know, we said Qui Gon was kind of the beginning of it. If if we kind of go all the way back to the very beginning, there was. Uh, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Jar Jar Binks. I think he he held some responsibility. Oh yeah, yeah. I yes, I think so too. Dark Jar Jar. <laughs> I think he was just as much an enabler as Padme was. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Alan, right. Alan said the need to keep their love secret falls on the Jedi as well. It does. It goes um, back to their rigid code. Yeah. 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 But then again, you know, they both went into, you know, Anakin willingly joined the Jedi Order. You know, it wasn't like he was a little kid who was taken from his parents at a super, super young age where he didn't know. He knew, he was old enough to understand what that meant you know that once he once he made that decision to say like yes i want to go and become a jedi he knew you know he was old enough to understand that that meant okay i can never get married i can never do this this and this and you know he was at what they you know he was old enough to understand kind of what what that would entail i would think so and they both knew they both knew that even uh, I think it was Obi Wan made the comment of "You made a," and I can't remember the exact line. You've made a commitment to the Jedi Order, one that's not easily broken. And so uh, they knew, even though you can make the argument of the the code is you know the code is is rigid, it's a rigid code, but still he knew he he willingly said he was going to adhere to that code. It's the same thing of if you're you know. A Catholic and you decide to become a priest, you know, you you understand once you make that vow what that vow entails. It's not like you can you make the vow, and you're like, oh, I didn't know. Well, Sorry. That, that's really a bad um, example because I don't, don't want to do that. Um <laughs> well, a lot of the yeah. Jedi broke the code but, too. Well, and... But I mean, you go right back. You said Obi-Wan. Yeah. Obi-Wan saw it coming. He oh, yeah. really did nothing to stop it. Oh, yes. He and we have it confirmed now by the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan knew. Oh, absolutely. He knew about Obi. He knew about them and and he didn't do it because he knew it made Anakin happy. Right. And then if you watch, you know, if he would have stepped in, I think uh, you know yeah. the, the whole shuttle scene where they get back and and he walks off with the senators so that Anakin can run over and hide behind the column with Padme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think more of the Jedi Council knew than was let on. I think 
I definitely think Yoda knew, or at least had I at least had had um, speculation. Right. Well, for somebody that could see the future, yeah, he sure was... didn't see that coming. Yeah, I think he had. I think he had. I think he's there. Was specul. I think he had an idea, but I don't know if he knew for sure. Like how. I definitely think he knew that there was a relationship going on between them. Uh, but I, whether or not he knew that they were married, yeah, the, then, the Sith yeah, were I don't clouding know if he knew that. The, the future. Uh, yes. So he couldn't see everything yes. that was going to happen. Yes, Otherwise, you know, put a stop to it, you just put a saber through Anakin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would have made for a short. Well, I mean, trilogy, that's the though. easy way. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, wait, wait till episode three. <laughs> <laughs> just nudge his ship when they're doing the uh, initial space battle there. And just, whoops. So, are we going to get to the actual actual fall part? Um, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh. Where it's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> you said this is the fall of uh, Anakin, so uh, it's actually the ending of Jedi when he falls to you know Darth the Lord Vader becomes Anakin again. Wow, woo! He falls. He falls to uh, Anakin. I, he falls I see what you did there. there. Uh, I so I see Luke, what you did there. For those of you who haven't figured, for those of you who uh, haven't figured it out yet, Joe is our resident Imperial propagandist. <laughs> the truth um, is not. Or is he like this? The truth is out there. Yeah, the truth is not propaganda. <laughs> it says so on our pamphlet. Imperial scum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes, 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 Alan. He is imperial scum. Rebel. You guys are imperial rebel dog. <laughs> I think you think it's uh, you're outnumbered, Joe. No, no, we just haven't got enough people watching the show yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Raise your hands if you side with the Mandalorians. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. But, yeah, I mean, it's it just each one of them makes huge mistakes in how how they are around Anakin. Mm -hmm. And it just nudges him and nudges The, the yeah. only one who makes no mistakes is Palpatine. I mean, Palpatine wants that in. Mm. And, ironically, and yeah. Ironically, I, and ironically, yeah. I mean, that's he didn't have to do anything. Everybody else was doing it for him. Did, yeah. Well, and, no. he, and he worked it. He, he, yeah. You know, um, you know, you won't learn that from a Jedi. You, he just worked it. Every time they made a mistake, he built on it. Mm -hmm. to, to to. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I, I love that part. That was that was great. The, yeah, he had a, a plan within a plan within a plan within a plan within yeah, a plan. We might have well just called this you the know, manipulation and, of Anakin. Right. Well, to go, Alan mm -hmm. just said oh, Palpatine yeah. can't say the same for Luke and Ray. That's because Palpatine actually tried to get them, and it didn't work out. But he didn't try with Anakin. Yeah. He let everybody else do the work. And it worked. So he should have just Yeah, he just sat back and he set he set the stage. It was like he set the table and then just sat back and let everyone else yeah, exactly do all the heavy lifting for him and then sat, you know, and just waited until exactly it was right. the long he game. Play the long game with Luger, you know, or, he got in from Yeah. 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 Cause he didn't know about them. Yep. Playing that long game. Whereas he knew from the beginning about Anakin. Yeah. yeah who else started, we got? Who else started, who else can we lay blame game. on? <laughs> <laughs> um well now we're back to we're back to, <laughs> well, we're back to Mace, of course. Jar Jar. We yes. Jar Jar. Yes, Jar Jar. I mean, Jar Jar is what Lord. causes the fall of the Empire. Yes. Um, he, he does the rise, and then he does the fall. He's just a loser. Um, getting that. <laughs> yes. Jar Jar was out for his own interests. Yeah, nobody wants to claim. He was trying That's to get right. rid of everybody that was in his way so that he could become uh, the new emperor, which is probably where we're going to go with the new sets. <laughs> the, you know, Disney will come there. We don't yeah, say Disney that will say that. Here. He'll come out of the woodwork. He'll become 
Darth Jar Jar and take over the galaxy. Oh, yeah. No, Brian is right. From now on, Jar Jar is he who shall not be named. <laughs> so, Star Wars Episode 11, if Rise of say, Jar Jar. He's calling Voldemort. <laughs> Oh, um, well, actually, the guy I think that we can, he <laughs> killed very, <laughs> what do you say his name? Oh, Lord. No. Jar Jar. Jar Jar. <laughs> like, hey. No. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> um, I was going to say, and I was hoping to wait, you know, get a little bit further in before we kind of got to to this, but I think the one person who, and I think this is one we can maybe talk to for quite a while, um, who deserves the most blame for the fall of Anakin Skywalker is Anakin Skywalker. Well, it's called personal responsibility. Yes. <laughs> As we said, when he made the decision to become a Jedi, he knew what he was getting into. And this was part of the problem even, I think this is one of the things that he kind of realized at the end when he, you know, came back from being Darth Vader to become Anakin again was he stopped blaming everything. That's right. He sure blamed the victim. Uh, he stopped... <laughs> he... Uh, he stopped blaming everyone else for his fault, for all the things that were going on around him. I think that's one thing you see really in episode two. The beginning to see in episode two and you really see in episode three was him blaming everyone else. Mm -hmm. The Jedi wouldn't let me see my mom. Uh, the, Je the Jedi wouldn't do this. The Jedi wouldn't do this. Obi-Wan, you know, is keeping, you, you're keeping me from her. Well, let's see um, how you do the all these things you know, always blaming other people. Your, let's see how you do having What's many as your father. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> what, yeah, that is, yes, the mom thing is a pretty legitimate complaint. Was it just yes. one Metachlorian um, or it was like all of them together as his father? I mean, I'm confused on the logistics here. I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know. I, <laughs> well, I don't know and, what it is. And I don't know if I want to know. The thing is, is a pretty legitimate complaint. He had, uh, he wasn't taken as an infant, so he knew his mother. Right. And he was yep. still at the age where he yes. needed his mother when they took him. That's true. And that, yeah. that loss is just going to grow. Yes. And, and fester and, and be yeah. in there. And yeah. when he finally gets to see her, you know, 20 seconds later, dead. he dies. <laughs> oh, it's my Annie. Broke. Mm hmm. Yeah, but well, and the, that goes back to also uh, Obi Wan's, you know, his role in the whole thing of not allowing him to go, you know, of not of not because he knew about the he knew about the nightmares that he was having. You know, I think he even he even mentioned something about it instead of being the father figure that he needed. He basically was like. Well, you know, yeah, the code says suck no. it up. Yeah, the code says no. Um, but still, I think I think there does have to be something to be said about personal responsibility and taking responsibility for your actions, which is, I think, finally at the end, what what Vader slash Anakin did was take responsibility for his actions. That you know, yes, there might have been extenuating circumstances that led him to to these decisions but in the end they were his decision it was his decision to kneel before palpatine and pledge allegiance to him it was his decision to go and you know he made the decision to kill the younglings he made the decision to do all the things that he did afterwards those were his decisions they weren't anyone else's decision they were well and we Anakin's. knew he was going to kill the younglings he had done it. He did it to the sand. Yeah. So. Yeah. Again, but and again, that was you know he made that right. decision. <laughs> you know, yes, he he did it in a fit of of rage and a fit of Which anger made him uh, because of the, 
Yes. <laughs> Alan says, um, yeah, when he turns, he does it fast. Well, yeah, they got to fit it all into one oh, movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in both directions. <laughs> They only had two hours. They had to knock that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, they do it in three movies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I agree, though. Yeah. I, Anakin really has... He holds a lot of the blame on himself. He, he definitely could have made some better decisions, but at the same time, he was kind of manipulated a little bit or in in joe's view he was led in the right direction um yes right, led to the right into around, the, uh, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so uh when do i get those credits you were talking about no that's oh. <laughs> after, after the well, well i think this is a good time to kind of uh open up sorry Open up to any uh, any questions that the uh, listeners might have out there. Hard to judge them without feeling those dark side forces working on you. Um, well, I mean that's and that's actually a good a good comment, and we can kind of go into this. Is was he was this inevitable? I mean, did he have did he really have no choice? in the matter or is this a matter of the force and that's one thing we haven't really talked about now with this whole thing is the force itself uh, the force is the responsive the force being responsible for him turning to the dark side of the force was him turning the will of the force yes mm -hmm. had to bring balance had, that's I mean, the only way to balance yeah and and if you want to get i mean very very technical then yeah he did at the end, there were two Jedi and two Sith. And yes, I know there were more around, but for basically all intents and purposes, you had two Jedi and mm -hmm. two Sith. Which if anybody goes back and listens and... to our conversation about the Force itself, they always bring up that the Force is a living thing. And one of the things that we had proposed is if the Force is a living thing, then potentially the Force is light and is dark so it's pretty neutral and it's got to mm -hmm. keep the balance yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> rural farm boy says i agree it was the will of the force it was the will of the force <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right well but... and then it swings the other direction to bring balance back when um the empire gets too strong um, exactly. Too much power. Those dang Too much power rests in Palpatine and Vader's hands. Uh, so now it swings it back. Yeah. And who does it use to swing it back the other direction? Yep. No. Luke. Anakin again. Or Anakin. Exactly. Anakin. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he was the chosen one. He was the one that would bring balance. Ellen brings up a good point. Maybe, to... maybe the real thing to blame here is the Metaclorians. Maybe. Maybe it's all their fault. Well, it was definitely George's fault for ever introducing the damn things. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So it's George's fault. All right. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, come on. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe it was Jar Jar in the same movie introduction. Come <laughs> on. Maybe it was society's fault because they needed a space opera. And George facilitated that need. Mm. No, no, he facilitated that need in 77. Right, that's what I mean. If it wasn't for him yeah. doing that, but that was society begging for something so awesome that we're still talking about it so far later. Uh, well, I agree, but he should have been <laughs> careful when he wrote episode one. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, got to make that money. Yeah. I'm surprised we didn't have midichlorian little action figures <laughs> <laughs> a bottle of glitter well i know what i'm getting for the next time we do one of these live things i gotta find a way to make a metachlorian <laughs> um, does the prophecy refer to anakin falling or to anakin eventually returning and taking out palpatine that's a good question alan they never give us mm. the whole prophecy 
All we hear is the part. No, they never do. There will be the one who will bring balance to the force. Only part of the prophecy we hear. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and and it's like a big pendulum to me. The force, it just can't seem to settle in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I I kind of wonder if we had have heard more of the prophecy itself. Maybe that part was taken out of context. You know, and and Alan brings up another very valid point. What is it that constitutes balance? Because come the end of episode six, it's just Luke. Well, but yeah. he leaves. He does leave. And I'll so give you that. Basically, now there's for a while there there was nobody for either side until the first order appeared. Yeah. Oh, basically, until he made one, and. Uh, but even by himself, Kylo was, you know, no big deal until the First Order was born. Right. But I, I think we're digressing a bit here. <laughs> we've strayed away from the blame game. Oh, well, I mean, now we're philosophizing. Well, I think we've kind of, well, I think we've kind of gone through, you know, the main people that, you know, can kind of focus on blame and, you know, now we're into more nuanced territory of, you know, what caused the, you know, the fall and why won't the, force you know, mm -hmm. that's how it seems to me. The yeah. Force. You know, and Alan asked the question of what constitutes balance. Well, I mean, that depends on what you, you know, who you ask and what you consider. Um, you know, for me, it's like we said, it's an equal amount of yeah, when we dark were and light. Two. Unfortunately, the two light didn't yeah. do anything. Which let it swing it towards yeah. the dark side. So, mm -hmm. you know. And well, and you also have, you know, even, you know, during the time of like, you know, the Republic. Before, you know, before the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. You know, how many Jedi did you have? Thousands. Thousands of Jedi. You always just had two Sith. So there was no balance. Mm. There was, you know, it was way off balance. And, you know, things began to get wonky. And that's when I think the Force said, hey, we need to get something in here to... <laughs> I, that's when we... Look at it, yeah. Much as much dark side as light, yeah. I mean, that's one. That is one way of looking at it. I think everything within the Star Wars universe can be always seen from a certain point of view, and that is definitely one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is, um, I think what you know, Lucas wanted, which is the idea of. I think for Lucas, that was kind of his idea of, of balance was that good will always triumph over evil and good will always prevail. Right. The only way I see you um, getting a balance in the force is if there's a gray order in the middle who keeps the light and the dark in check. Yeah. And then you get into, you know, the whole controversy of mm -hmm. the gray jedi um i know that can that can get a lot of huge debates around uh star wars fans that whole the whole idea of the gray jedi is one that's very <laughs> yeah i agree with that alan <laughs> would you guys Propaganda, Alan. Propaganda. yeah the... <laughs> alan's like i got all these pamphlets everywhere <laughs> Look at me spreading conspiracy. <laughs> well, you know, back to Anakin was trying to bring balance. Uh, once he became Vader, he continued to try and find a balance. He wanted order in the galaxy at that time. And he, he and Palpatine, he thought they were achieving it through the use of the dark side. That the light side allowed too much individuality, was too on you, you know, control, uh, the people didn't all work towards common goals. 
so that was really good propaganda mm -hmm. there guys i mean that means i need to record that <laughs> i got you that was good thank you <laughs> that was good um, that's the best imperial truth i've spoken in a while <laughs> rural farm boy yeah that's that's a good way to put it he says i don't subscribe to no no gray jedi yeah. it's like a vegan sometimes eats meat <laughs> <laughs> uh i think calling them great jedi I think maybe is probably where the big mix-up kind of it's like a misnomer i think they just need to be like the gray order or something they they have their own tenants or you know or their own views their own philosophy yeah yeah i think something like you know force users or you know i would consider you know someone like people like um and from rogue one um chet and, and Baze from rogue one or later on um ahsoka you know someone who's not necessarily a jedi but they're not a Sith either. They're somewhere mm -hmm. in between. Um, Guardian of the Wells. Yes, Guardian the Guardians of the Wells. Yeah, that, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was very cool to have non-Jedi yeah, like Force Jar. users. Um, <laughs> or Metachlorians. <laughs> right? We finally got off the subject and you brought us right back. <laughs> Let Ray uh, has you can all now ban it called the Leo effects. Right. I mean, I'm an agent of chaos. That's, that's what I do. So you're on my side. I knew I would get <laughs> I'm on whoever side greases my palms better. Yeah. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep sending you people to interview. <laughs> I guess I'm imperialist. Here we go. <laughs> Poor Mark. He's just like, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's saying there they go again. But but I'm sure you agree. You know, I think Anakin yeah. was trying to be the chosen one, and he. I think to an extent he was. Yeah, he didn't know I, if it yeah, was I think Anakin so. or his Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Until the end of Jedi. Yeah, and he realized he needed to be Anakin. That's a mm -hmm. good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think. Do you think that the the pressures of you know going through that whole thing of of you know growing up and being told you're the chosen one, you're well, the chosen one, <laughs> it's you. Oh yeah, and let's not even forget the pressure that was on Obi Wan. You know, he had just been made right a knight. He had just you know, gone from Padawan to Knight. It's like, congratulations, you're now a Jedi Knight. Here's the here's your Padawan. Oh, by the way, he's the most powerful Jedi we've ever had. Congratulations, he's yours. <laughs> yeah. Your yeah, first that's Padawan. That's a lot of weight. It's, you know, it'd be the equivalent of being like, like of, you know, it's like, congratulations, you're, you've just gone through your, all your training to work here at Walmart. Here, here you go. Here are the keys to the company. You're yeah. now CEO. Yeah, they definitely. I, I think Good that's luck. why Obi Wan was so sassy. He he had to adapt. TK two zero six six. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Real what, what was? Uh, I always thought seeing Luke succeed, where he <laughs> failed, helped bring Anakin back. He said former Alan. Hmm. He said former. I'm curious what his nickname was. <laughs> Why are you... um, seeing Luke succeed in resisting Palpatine, I think, is what Alan's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and that helped bring Anakin yeah. back. Plus, I think it was the one thing that Anakin had searched for his whole life. And he lost it with Padme, which was the love. And, and I think that finally yeah. shone through, realizing, you know, this is my son that he's about to kill. So he just succeeded in the yeah. dark side and, and that, that scene, realized this is truly my son. Yeah. I think there was two there's two scenes in, in particular that I think began to really turn Vader back into Anakin. One was 
uh, Luke throwing down, uh, throwing down the lightsaber, and saying, "I am a Jedi like my father before me." And I could almost see a little, you know, it, it, even though you didn't see it in the mask, I could almost imagine that kind of look of pride, like, "Yeah, that's my <laughs> son. Hey, that's my son who just said that." And then when he called his name out when he's father. being electrocuted and he says, yeah. father, help me. I think that right there was well, like, and it told yeah, I got to help my son. Before he brought him to the Empire. Yeah. It's too late for me, son. He did call him Skywalker. Yes. Yeah. He called him son for the first time. Son. Because he'd always referred to him yeah. as, you know, Skywalker. Yeah. This uh, Palpatine. Uh, yep. Skywalker must not become a Jedi. The son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, because at the time, I think, I mean, for Anakin, there was a, um, hmm. yeah, I don't like the the new no they throw in there before Anakin's return. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that either. I, you know, I think one thing um, that everybody can agree on, though, is that Anakin Skywalker, also possibly a little bit Darth Vader, was the direct and literal fall of Emperor Palpatine. Yeah. His long game backfire. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and if you think about it, he succeeded yeah. what an, a, a Sith apprentice is supposed to do. He killed his man. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By falling him down he did. a thermal shaft. You know, unfortunately, he followed shortly thereafter, so he could <laughs> assume the reins of you the. Know... <laughs> <laughs> that balance is a weird pendulum, you know, <laughs> trying to keep things in line. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's a tragic story. Yeah. And, and it well, is a tragic story. Yeah. And, and that's exactly it how, is. you know, it is. It, it's like a Greek tragedy, is how, how it plays out. For, it, it is definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's very he Anakin is very much a tragic character. And so, so how about it's our, all about that yeah. I think right. that's so what resonates with so many people. Think? Got any questions or comments you want to jump in? Yes. I absolutely, thought, Alan. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. I, I, yes, yeah, I do. I do. I think it very much does. Um, that was definitely one thing. First thing I thought of when I heard the voice um, in the trailer. Yep. And, and for anybody listening on Anchor, Alan said, uh, do you think bringing back Palpatine undermines Anakin's triumph? That's that's what we're discussing right this second. And we're, we're all kind of unanimously mm -hmm. saying, yes, it absolutely does undermine it. Because whether or not... Yeah the Palpatine we see is a clone or it's the original kept alive through unnatural means, whatever, like I, yeah, it definitely undermines that redemption of Anakin. Wow. The three of us agreed on something. That's hmm. I know it's weird. Wow. And it was no hesitation. I know, right? Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. That's because yeah. Megan made up off to say that. Yeah. Alan responds. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that, she knows that's as a well. great point, Alan. Um, and that, that was one of those mistakes. Uh, our, our show is uh, War of the Stars. War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Um, when we do our, our goodbyes, we'll give you all the, the info. Um, it was a cool moment uh, hearing, hearing the laugh. It, that was the... <gasps> um, in the trailer, when the first teaser trailer, when you heard heard the laugh, that was the the shocking moment. So, I I kind of um, had a, one of those moments where it was like, oh man, it's like the Death Star all over again. Like, how many times are you gonna reuse the same bad guy? Uh, star Star Killer Planet. Oh, it's another yeah. Death Star, just bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's the same storyline as New Hope, uh, but so, with yeah. space horses. Well, yeah, we didn't get the for space forces. <laughs> <laughs>
That was cool. That was a cool scene. Seeing the ruined Death Star yeah, and that was Rise of awesome. Skywalker. Um, I wish it had followed on that the was very cool. and not the other movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting close to uh, close to our time. So uh, why don't we go around and Joe, we'll start with you and tell the fine folks here where they can, uh, where you can find me over they can find you under uh, joe cahill director producer for steamhouse entertainment uh you can also check out some of my uh, future film projects uh the last battleship uh night mistress which is in post-production now and uh, a few others you can find them all under the steamhouse i'm also on uh, instagram under steamhouse entertainment and twitter under uh coffee steampunk and of course, you can always reach me right here through War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast, or the One Crit Blunders, a D and D show that I do with Ray. Cool. And Ray, where can people find All you? All right, on the interwebs. interwebs. Uh, War of the Stars, Star Wars podcast. I mean, that's always a good place to start. And then if you get on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do the Leo effects with an A, not an E. Uh, you can find my interviews there that I do with entertainment folks. And as Joe just said, I also have started a new show with him. It's a D and D podcast, fifth edition called the one crit blunders <laughs> and it's chaos fueled insanity. And it's super fun. And Tuesdays I do even more insane stuff playing shattered Dawn with the shattered dungeons folks. Cool. All right, I've done this a few times. Let's go through this. If you want to get in contact with the show, the best way to do that is through our email, uh, War of the Stars at War of the Stars One at gmail.com. Uh, you can also get a hold of us through our Facebook page. Uh, just search War of the Stars and Facebook. Twitter is also at War of the Stars One. Our Patreon, if you want to support us, we would really appreciate any support you could give us. Uh, best way to do that is through patreon.com forward slash war of the stars. You can hear us also anywhere fine podcasts are heard, but the best way is through anchor.com. Uh, just anchor.com forward slash war of the stars. We're also on Spotify. We are on Pandora Radio. Um, pretty much anywhere you can get podcasts. And don't forget our fine show. For make a wish. Uh, before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, before we go, I want to just give a quick, very quick, heartfelt shout out to everyone here at Force Fest. We are truly humbled and honored to be a part of this. This is so cool. We're just a silly little podcast, silly little Star, silly little Star Wars podcast, and the idea um, that you guys would say, "Hey, come and be a part of this," is truly cool, truly humbling. And just shows, like I always say, when we end it, that this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the Force be with you. <laughs>